Pickles and Dickles, Kippy. We got a new tour alert, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Stay Trashy 2023 tour is upon us. Uh-huh. Come hang with us, gang. It's a great way to introduce new people to the show. Bring the whole squad and come see us. It's going to be fun. Yeah, gang, it'll be a party. Obviously, uh, this weekend, when there's still some tickets left to our third show at the Gramercy Theater in New York City. Scoop them up if they're still available. But then we're gearing up, and we're going out, baby, running and gunning. Starting in March, we're going to be in Baltimore, Virginia Beach, Richmond, Virginia, Oklahoma City, Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas, Austin, Texas. And in April, we're going to be in New Haven, Connecticut, Burlington, Vermont. May, we're hitting Tampa, Dania Beach, Florida, Raleigh, North Carolina. And in June, Cleveland and Columbus, more cities coming. Get those tickies now, baby. Yeah. Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's favorite new podcast. This is Are You Garbage? Oh, yeah. It's a little show we sit down with your favorite comedians, and we find that if they're good to be classy, mm-hmm. or if they're just a big old piece of trash. <laughs> I'm your host, H. Foley, coming at you on a beautiful day. We're down here at Aunt Toadie's basement. She's upstairs screaming, Go Birds, Go baby. Birds, baby. Going to the Super Bowl. Everybody's excited down here. My co host is coming at you from right next to me. He is the CEO of Are You Garbage? He is an international businessman he's the kind of guy that can pull your car to make it look like an accident <laughs> give it up for kj kevin james ryan hey what's up everybody thanks for tuning in as always please make sure you rate view subscribe on itunes full video available on youtube as you know those numbers are <laughs> cooking and obviously the greatest gosh darn website of all time www.patreon.com slash are you garbage check it out you get bonus episodes episodes of hard feelings the whole nine yards we got a bunch of shit on there check it out yeah paying for my dermatology appointment tomorrow to get this nose fixed <laughs> how about a nice quick shout out to our producer extraordinaire the magic man makes us all look good works the ones works the twos crosses the t's dots the i's plus he's got that big old ding dong give it up for <laughs> t-bone mcscruffins toby mcmullen everybody what do you want me to do? He doesn't ah. have a mic. <laughs> that was egregious. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting there staring at me. Uh. Gang, the reason the long hair doesn't have a mic is we have two of our old good pals mm-hmm. here in the studio with us. They're the stars of Oops the Podcast. Fucking love them to death. One of them recently got a high five from Jason Tatum, and the other one recently almost got his balls electrocuted by the Taliban. <laughs> Give it up for sure. Julio Gallerati and Francis Ellis, everybody. Hey, Let's go. The up, boys boy? are here. Hey, What's up? What's the better looking us. Fine. That's a they fine are. intro. That's they a are fine the better intro. looking us, man. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. What are you wearing, Francis? What's that shirt? LL Bean. Really? Yeah. We were just talking about the Bean <laughs> yeah. Man. I'm from Freeport, Maine, so I grew up less than a mile from the store. Just walking oh. around wearing duck boots the whole time. You know, I didn't buy the boots, uh, but we had everything else was Bean. I mean, I, I would buy a new backpack every couple of years for school from LL Bean. You have a very LL Bean stature. You look oh, good yeah. in LL Bean. It was. It's one of those things. I didn't know. I didn't think it was cool because we lived there. It was. It really was. No, it <laughs> was. It, in the it now, wasn't. when I was a kid in the '80s, it was very cool. Agreed, dude. I did not think it was cool. No, it was maybe in the '80s, and then like for people like when it hit the '90s, you were like. What the that fuck? was like what your dork, like the dorky dad. Eddie wore Bauer everything. started to take over dorky dad yeah. stuff. Yeah, but now uh, they've, I guess, moved a little bit more towards kind of being somewhat acceptable. And I start, I don't wear, I wear them unironically now. Yeah, with their clothing because uh, it's like all I want to look like. And mm-hmm. is that new? Is that brand new? Got it at Chris, Christmas time. Have you washed it? No. It, so is that something that you would wash, or are yeah. you a dry clean only guy? No, I wash it. Because you strike yeah. me as a dry clean only kind. No, <laughs> dry cleaning doesn't he? Got to read the tag, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I play it by the book, maybe. Yeah, Whatever you need. Yeah. Book. yeah. Dry well, cleaning is expensive. It's super expensive. It is. For laundry, what are you guys doing? You drop off. You're obviously both New York. You live in New York. Do you drop off? You do it in the building. What do you? You probably got it in the. He's unit. got it in the. In the you apartment. got it in the unit, yeah, right? Got, in the got apartment. It in the unit, yeah. He's yeah. got people making fresh LL Bean shirts downstairs <laughs> in the basement. He's of got his Mr. House. Bean in there. Yeah. I got my. I have a laundry on the floor. Oh, that's which that might as well be in the apartment. That's all right. So I would argue that it might as well be in the basement. <laughs> it sucks. Like around. you have to because you know how I don't know doing laundry requires mustering up energy to do it the most. And when I finally have that fucking sack of Santa's gifts over my shoulder, heading over to the laundry machine, 
And if there's somebody already doing it, I Sucks. might not do it for four more days. Yeah, how many, yeah, yeah, how many uh, washer and dryers are on your floor? There's only one of each, but there's only three. What? There's only three units on the floor. Okay. And each floor has their own washer dryer. Really? Will you ever get other people? This is. A, will you ever get other people? Going to another floor to do their laundry? Never. No, it's always no. always your floor. But some of the people on the floor will just leave their shit in there for a bit. Yeah. But since it's not it's like not that populated, it doesn't end up being a problem, but it sucks. In unit would be significantly better. Will you do the trash move of taking somebody's wet laundry out of the washer and put it in the dryer? I won't do it. I know really? you would. I would not. Do I would. Do a for vlog sure. I give it. you like three or four, five minutes tops. Yeah. Then it's getting it's it's getting pulled. I think I did it in college once. Because we used to have, you know, it was like communal. Sure. sure. And, floor, and yeah. there'd be people who just leave it for, for forever. Yeah. And you wouldn't have any. So I would take it out and put it on top and then and and then put my stuff in. And you got a machine in the, in the house, right? Yeah. Nice. Dude, yeah. There, the guy in my floor left his stuff in the dryer and my stuff was in the washer. And I went back three or four times. He did not take it out. I decided I'm going to fold it for him. What? Folded and it? And put it on top of the machine. He comes in while I'm doing it, bro. <laughs> he just thinks you're a creep. <laughs> hey, buddy, get off my underwear. Sniffing his boxers. Hey, dude, I'm holding his fucking bloomers, dude. <laughs> and he goes, and he look, looks at me. I'm like, oh, yeah, I figure we're both guys. <laughs> I didn't know what else to say. <laughs> oh, dude. It's too, and then I was like, I'm never going through that again. Dude. What did he say? He How was like, dare oh. you assume my gender? <laughs> He's kind of quiet to begin with, so it was going to be awkward just seeing him. So, like... He it probably was, wrote was, the landlord, dude. That's the creepiest thing I've ever heard in my life. Mm. My girlfriend, I told her the story. She ran in bed and put a pillow over her face. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> very... You, you can't do that to a girl. Uh, but, no. No, no. How you bad would you that You can't be? get caught <laughs> doing it to a girl. <laughs> 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 yeah. Would you... Uh, was the move to be like passive aggressive? Like, fuck you? Or you just felt bad? I don't want to leave his fresh, clean clothes to get wrinkled. I'm like, dude, why, why am I touching your shit? And here's the answer. I wasn't being passive aggressive. I just was like, my shit was sitting in the washer rotting. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, enough's enough. Got to make a move. I tried to be cool about it. I think we're cool. I don't know. I'm not trying to have a Hatfield McCoy situation. Yeah. I'm just trying to chill, dude. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't need any trouble. Are you currently in any beefs with a neighbor? You're you're a prideful man. You we, argue we, with He's strangers. a fucking troublemaker. He's a beef. What are you talking you about? Are. He's a beefer. I, I'm Starts all beef. trouble. <laughs> uh, I'm a beef man. And uh -huh. did you knock off that block in the lane shit? Are you still doing that? No, I haven't done it in a while. But that went viral. Yeah. Do you know what I did do, though? <laughs> dude, it's, you're going to get shot. Well, I know. But he looks like a guy... If I got it, I'd be willing to, if you are willing to fight and I get out and saw him, I'd be like, all right. Uh, it's like, he's the guy you don't want to be in the car, size-wise. You're a, you're a nice guy, but I'm just saying. The people, though, that are getting out of the car it, to fight me will have weapons. Yeah. So, true. That's what I'm I, saying, I don't man. have weapons. Can't be doing that shit out in Brooklyn. But you know what I did get as a weapon <laughs> against all of this for me to keep doing it is I got one of those stickers that says baby on board <laughs> so that they'll Mind see that games. and I they'll like be like, it. well, I'm not going to go beat up this father. Yeah, I'm not going to kill this dad. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to beat him up in front of his newborn. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, I didn't, I wouldn't even want to. You got step, two car seats in the back. It doesn't even say baby on board. It says princess on board. <laughs> oh <laughs> my God. That's great. <laughs> he just mean you. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, hey, princess, get out of the car. I figured that would appeal more to the Latinos. <laughs> 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 on my way to a quinceanera yeah, in the back uh, of, written on the back of the car. That's all right. <sighs> what's the uh, what's the vacation plan? Do you boys got anything coming up? You like to hop, knob, jump around the world? Well, he does, his vacations aren't. I mean, you do vac, but you do like Trips. you were just literally in where were you? Iraq, or Afghanistan. Afghanistan. You that was recent. Well, it was in September, so recent. Dude, if you've ever been to Afghanistan, that's yeah. recent. I would argue. <laughs> <laughs> if you, that, that classifies as recently. Yeah. Dude, it's that's not wild. Miami. Not a vacation, for sure. You I mean, were filming. It, it sort of is. No, but I mean, it, it ultimately is. It's like a, a trip. Girlfriend always says there's a difference between a trip and a vacation. I agree with that. Yes. Not relaxing at all, obviously, uh, but was obviously fun. Yeah, dude, opening. it's a war-torn country. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Go to Puerto Vallarta like a normal person. <laughs> yeah. and it's still a little, uh, you know, prickly. However, there is technically no actual war occurring. So <laughs> theoretically, it is probably sa it's safer to drive around there. Than you still get your fucking been. fingernails pulled out. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, not, not by the Taliban, though, because they're, you know, you're they're a visitor now and they they are happy that there are visitors. So they treat you really well. Huh. They're not scope. What do you mean? You're an American. You're you're an able bodied war 
eligible right. American. So they're, they're not looking at you like you're working for the company. <laughs> they make <laughs> sure they're in camouflage, dude. <laughs> yeah. They make or, sure he's over there getting that. drunk with people with falcons. What are you talking? About? Imagine, <laughs> imagine showing up to an army recruiting office and being like, "I'm a, I'm eligible for war." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know. said that like it was the Patriot, dude. I'm like, eligible. Just put yeah. it out there. No, so they they kind of like make sure to cross off that possibility when they first encounter you, which is not fun. You're greeted with suspicion. And you're kind of always yeah. worried about how that might go. But once they find out that you're a visitor, they're like, hey, you know, you're a guest in our country. Let us know if you need anything. But they also will probably force you to hang out for a while, really? which blows. And sometimes <laughs> that will turn into having to leave your plans and go far away with them. Yeah, run a, give me a, an example. And be held against your will. So like literally, I've <laughs> talked like about you this. just threw that in quotes. Like. I've talked about this on our pod. Sure. Uh, it's worth it. Bri- briefly. Plug the not, pod, baby. Check yeah. out Oops the podcast. Go. Check it out. Oops, the podcast, the boys. You know, we're trying to get to your level one of these days, you know. Uh, but anyway, so usually what happens is they look at your passport. They're so excited that you're an American and that you're visiting. And then they're like, yeah, they know, got another one. Throw yeah. you in a fucking cage. That's step one. What step happened one. to Brittany Griner? What are you doing? It's a different situation. Go to Miami. <laughs> You don't like doing coke? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Different situation. However, whatever. So they, they make us get out of the car. Step That's like step two. You get out of the car. They they take pictures with you. Uh, they don't let you do it with your phone. You're like, bro, come on. Air drop me that. <laughs> yeah, I, I need you know what I mean? <laughs> That's a flex on the gram. Yeah. Who's they, hanging out with terrorists? Huh? Then they're like, you guys should come become Muslims. Let's go. And and usually you can be like, nah, dude, sorry. Like, we got to go do something. And they're like, oh, okay. Like, what do you got to do? And you're like. Stuff and they're who's like, say, who's, oh, good. Who's communicating this? We have a guy with us, like a guide. So they're translating for us. The Taliban guys don't really speak English. So, uh, we we met one or two that did, but ninety five percent know English that we met. And yeah, then they, they dropped out of their liberal arts <laughs> educations <laughs> for their actually an art major. Set. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my cousin goes to NYU. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Look at that. So Ooh. at the very least, they are like polite and hospitable to foreign travelers, including women. They don't treat like women foreigners the way they treat their own women. You know, okay. which is its own problem, obviously. Um, this is in no way a Taliban, like about me vouching for the Taliban. Sure. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have to make that clear. You know what I mean? T-Bone, keep an eye on this one. <laughs> they might have turned him. Step three, yeah. dude. They will uh, make you. If he starts making weird finger signs. <laughs> yeah. Take him out. Exactly. Step three, they will make you drive to meet the leadership of the local area. They'll be like, it you got like Scientology. They'll be like, you got to meet the guy. You got to meet the commander. You got to meet Tony. He's awesome. <laughs> and we'll be like, no, no, no. But in this one particular scenario, they're like, no, you, you have to. And our guide was like, we got to go. And I was like, fuck. So now we're driving like 45 minutes with one of their guys in the car. We get to the compound. And these aren't like, you're not on the turnpike. These are like rough looking roads, uh, it right? Depends. No, there. Were, this one in particular was paved, but a lot of the times there are some bad roads. Like Dude. the most dangerous thing I did, I drove through what is considered to be the shittiest tunnel on the planet. Uh, it's You're nuts, six dude. miles long, no ventilation, potholes, giant trucks, like people die from carbon monoxide poisoning in there. So that was scary. <laughs> that was scarier than this story. But however, all right, we get to the Taliban headquarters. The commander basically just forces us to chill there for like a while. A couple hours of drinking tea. We don't know what's going on. No booze, right? There's no booze in the whole country. Unless there's like some sort of weird smuggling. If you ask somebody for a drink, they'd look at you like you're a fucking nuts. Okay. Even like non I ain't going to Are they, fe- are they feeding you at this little soiree? So they're like, sorry, we didn't know you were coming. But when on the drive back, you're coming back over and we'll make you dinner. And we're like, fuck. Like, uh, the guy's showing in my videos on my stand up. He's looking at it being like, pretending he knows what he's looking at. Being yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Had no fucking idea. Dude. It was crazy. <laughs> then... They, I realized why it's taken so long. One of the guys who had patted us down the driveway comes in the room with all our luggage, throws it on the ground. He's like, search, let's search you. And I'm like, I thought we we're friends. He's like, we are. So that's why you're going to search yourself and show us all your shit. I was like, okay, dude. So I'm like showing them underwear, socks. I'm like, this is an iPad, had a bunch of money in it, but they don't know about an iPad cover. So they weren't like open the case. They just were like, Suckers. okay. But had money scattered for this kind of occasion. They end up finding a huge envelope of cash. You know, not the fucking. Yeah. But yeah, like, yeah. is it Afghani cash? No, U.S. Hun- hundreds, new new issue hundreds only. That's the only thing that you can exchange there. Really? So they find like. What are we talking? Like five grand? Five grand. You had five grand. I had you? more than that. But Who what are you, are you doing? Born? Yeah. What are you talking you ne- about? Dude, you need it. You need it. Like first, I have to pay the guides. I have to do this, to that. Then you need like emergency funds. You know, oh, there's no our way next to take Patreon, out money. We're going to Afghanistan. <laughs> the fuck we are. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. I'll set you up. I'll set you up. Yeah. 
And yeah. you guys will fit right in, dude. Once you put the clothes on, everybody looks like they're Afghani. He would look like he's Afghani. I'm not even joking. I, don't know. I wouldn't not, look like dude, I was Afghani. Not joking. On my story, I, or on my Instagram, I have like, I did like a quick he's little He's wearing an LLB burqa. <laughs> There's a little girl oh, who looks like she's related to him in, in the video. I don't know. Like Anyway, so then they, find, they end up finding money. They count it on video to prove that they're not taking any. And then they ask me once the camera's off for a bribe. Like, what are they, like, half? So, the problem is, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be half or all of it, and they just asked me for 100 bucks. I'm like, dude, <laughs> absolutely, there you go. Are you sure that's all you want? Yeah, I'm like, I'm out of here. Yeah. That was it. That Wrap was up it. some of that non-bread, too. Yeah. Hey, we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst. And then they were all embarrassed and shit that, that they had taken our money, so they like, wouldn't look at us after. It was weird as fuck, dude. Uh, and that was, like, the shittiest thing. You didn't, you, didn't talk, you didn't tell the part about how when you got to the house, they had tons of guns. oh dude like yeah like we're talking yeah, it's the talent remember dude, <laughs> remember he laid their guns down remember the gun that val kilmer has in heat like yeah. that like gatling gun uh -huh. sort of like the thing drum, yeah. they have those in the room that i'm in like two hands required to mount on the back of a pickup truck they all drive toyota forerunners yeah, sure and, and they will just fucking mow model. you down and dude apparently they are all just marksmen like they were telling us these stories about guys that were just up on mountaintops like picking people off without like Jesus. a thing like a scope or anything like these guys are like career soldiers it's all they know so there's probably a hundred guns in this room and like all semi-automatic weapons like very fucking intimidating and the guy's like oh sit down here's some tea oh, you no. know mm. uh super are scary. you panicking at all during this a little bit but i, I got my it. poker face on I'm I'm like ah, showing a pair of twos. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> you know. I call, huh? Yeah. And then they're of course they're asking you like how you feel about the Taliban, and you just got to fucking lie and be like, I love the Taliban. Yeah, you're good <laughs> it's like, you know. yikes. Uh, but all good. I would say now that all is said, that's said and done, like we end up starting this like little school over there, which is a really nice I did thing. See that very Wait, cool, you yeah. did? Yeah. So now we're what? figuring out how to send money. That's how to become a Taliban, but. <laughs> So, dude, this is the problem. No, no, no. So, it's like not a Taliban affiliated sure, school. Of course, of course. We've gotten local permits from I mean, them, though. I love how he started a school, and I'm like, I'm shitting on it. Of course, it's a good cause. As the squad, as the football team. Yeah, no, I didn't mean to hijack this episode like the no, Taliban no, would a this is commercial nice. vessel. He got to the school, they're all on monkey bars. <laughs> but my biggest fear now is so we have this like law class helping us. Uh, like figure out how to send money. Wait, and, who started this school? Uh, me and like these local guys from. So like the lo I met with all the local teachers in this village, and like our guide was from the village, so he like arranged it, and we had this like round table discussion for like an entire day about the plan. It was like crazy. It was like a Game of Thrones esque gathering of the local tribes. Sure. You know? Wow. Um, but now, so the law class just responded to an email from us being like, "Hey guys." Please stop sending money to Afghanistan. Yeah, dude. Until we further review what you're allowed to do, we just want to make sure you're not in, in violation of any crimes because you could face serious criminal penalties. My Jesus Christ! Yeah, dude, the <laughs> FBI is gonna show up at your fucking house. Oh. I, I think we'll be fine, dude. I mean, we use fucking Western Union, like. Yeah, that's how criminals launder their money, dude. I know, but I, I don't think <laughs> that's I'd... for drug dealers and dirt bags. It's all good. We sent unmarked bills, <laughs> but I'm not sending it to anybody doing anything bad. And there are like limits that Western Union has in place, hopefully, that are in in line with these international laws, right? And you're trusting Western Union? Have you ever it's seen not. the people it's the that only use way to that? Do it. It's the only way to do it. Checks cashed, Aki, dude. Yeah. <laughs> 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 apparently, apparently, the uniform at this school is all these kids wear these vests that have big pockets in them. <laughs> and we just had to dress the entire class. Dude, get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Would you do something like that? Would you go over there? Um, I know you're an no. adventurous guy. I, I've done. I also know no, you're a goddamn American. He went to no. China. I've done a lot of adventure. Probably for recon. Oh, see, now he's ratting people out. Look at this one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Commie <laughs> bastard over here. I mean, between the two of you, we got a fucking incel and a fucking commie bastard. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm at a point in my life where... No, I, I, I You're don't. like a Hawaii guy. Get the feet up, some white sand. I feel like if you cocktail. showed up, if you showed up in Afghanistan... They would assume you're fucking CIA. Uh, maybe, and 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 I think that like for me, an adventure now would be like go to Japan or yeah, maybe South America. Yeah, not he he you you have a a true fearlessness death wish, and I he's presented it in a lot of ways where I I'm convinced it's not it's not reckless. I pitch it to him every time. 
either and like he passes fa- fairly fairly <laughs> formally. Yeah. We had dinner uh, for your engagement. Yeah. And I pitched the Iraq idea. I was able to sort of sell you guys on it, which was good. Afghanistan was a more difficult hurdle. <laughs> Afghanistan, the there were there were we you had friends. I don't think you knew about who were contacting me and, and being like, we need to talk them out of this. <laughs> Is Ricky one of yeah. them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. There were people. There were people that we were like, we don't want you to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I appreciate that concern. To be honest, they, you know, good friends. I, I I appreciate them looking out for me. But I believe in my mission, dude. Yeah. Which is what. Hey. I think that, like, you know, these risks that we think are so risky are not as risky as we fucking think. Yeah. To you end can up visit locked these up places. abroad. You're fucking nuts, dude. <laughs> Man. Mm. But Thanks. he does have a line. Yeah, I do. He has a, you, you, he, you have places you won't, won't go. I try, no active war zones. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty much it. He yeah. was looking at fucking Greenpeace, dude. <laughs> that in Jacksonville. Yeah. Won't go near it. <laughs> Never go back on a cruise again. It's funny you mentioned that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said to me that uh, Mogadishu in, in Somalia is, you know, you have to hire. It's wonderful this time of year. <laughs> it's a nice you have to, you have to you hire in the an Moke? army. You have to hire an army. You have to hire like 20 dudes with guns four, to protect you. To dudes, go anywhere. But it's like 1200 bucks a day. Did and you go there? No. I was he thinking, won't I was scouting there. it. I don't think I would go there. This is all for video. Yeah. Uh, That's for videos, right, but I, right, I'd right. like to just go also. The video, to be honest, allows me to justify doing it. I would love to do it anyway. The video, I enjoy doing those as well, but I'd like to just go also. Like if I wasn't making a video, it wouldn't stop me from going. Dude, do a reaction video. Eat like the old <laughs> yeah, 96er in some place. <laughs> Fight a kangaroo. Get, get, get views a different way, man. You're nuts. Dude, these things aren't even generating that many views. Either. That's, <laughs> a, that's the shittiest part about all this. 300 thing. people <laughs> liked it. God damn. They're not doing very well, I'll be honest. I'm really trying to build up the channel, but it's not going too well. <laughs> uh, we gotta put lipstick on to go to get the yeah, views. What do I have to do? <laughs> what the fuck? What's the matter with you people? Dude, one of these places are going to keep you. You're going to become their simple Jack. It's my, it's my fear. You just have to do Oops the Podcast with a guy dressed up like Francis. Simple Jack. I would really hate that, dude. Uh, yeah, man. And you come funny. back and it's supposed to be this triumphant moment, but too much life has gone by. Yeah. And you just never settle back in fully. Yeah. 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 Like Tom Hanks and Castaway. Jesus dude, Christ. Yeah, I, you miss your life in captivity. Oh, Stockholm man. Syndrome. Wild. <laughs> hate to see it, dude. The show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Yes, it is. Kev, let's talk about that BetterHelp, baby. Love that BetterHelp, baby. I'm a client myself. Yes, you are. Crazy as they come, this <laughs> one. You shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I kill you! Gang, we all got things going on. God knows I do. Mm-hmm. And a better way to get that off your chest is to talk to somebody about it. And they have specialists that you might not have in your hometown, and you can do it from the comfort of your own home. Oh, yeah, baby. Uh, BetterHelp is a therapy option that is convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely done online. You fill out a brief questionnaire, you get matched with a licensed therapist, mm-hmm. and switch therapists at any time at no additional charge. It's easy peasy, baby. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I use it. It's fantastic. The The communication is easy. They have live chats. They ha- They have live sessions. You can just do messages, whatever you want. It's easy peasy. I highly recommend Talk Therapy. It is a game changer if you're struggling with something out there. And baby, like the big man said, we all are. Mm-hmm. If you want to, if you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com/garbage today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com/garbage. Do it. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about true classics. True classics. I've been seeing them ads all over Instagram, uh-huh. everywhere. They're great. I've waited out of them a little bit. Sure. They only go up to 3X, uh-huh. but it's still a good product. Yes. Just because my fat ass can't fit into it anymore. I'm wearing one right now. They're fantastic. Is Th- that what that is? This is an old one, too. This one's this one's got about 300 washes on it, really? too. And they hold up. They're yeah. great. If you see me wearing a tee... I'm a true classics man. They got a nice cut in the shoulders. They make you feel good. They're a little wider around the belly area because I like a nice beverage. You know what I mean? That's what you need. Um, they're fantastic. Uh, it's a new year, new you. Like I said, I love them. They're fantastic. I order. I try to keep them fresh. You got to cycle in new ones. Mm-hmm. And you get like a three-pack with the with the promo code GARBAGE. You save a you know, couple, few shekels. Sure. And then you're just constantly working them in. You throw one out, you get a new one in. You know what I mean? Do that whole Three thing. 3X they go up to. Yeah. They're for the big boys. Yeah. You know, bigger boys, bulky uh-huh. guys, husky. Kids that used to be husky, 
Now a true classic. So I get, wear them around the house. I just can't wear them out. Sure. Like belly you got peak. one on each leg. <laughs> you get 25% off at trueclassics.com slash garbage. Get free shipping included on purchases over 100 bucks. That's 25% off at trueclassic.com slash garbage. Santa won't be the only one slaying thanks to True Classics. Now back to the show. Back to the show. That's all right. <laughs> I mean, that's a jump, dude. Yeah, that's why I forgot. I did know that and I forgot about it. Did you see any of our gear over there? Do you see any Blackhawks or any of that shit? There's a couple like they keep sort of like tanks that they've destroyed on the side of the road for to like sh- as a thing of might. Uh, and there's a couple Humvees like active Humvees. But for the most part, you don't see that much. The car choice is Toyota Corolla from <laughs> an older one too, uh-huh. uh, and any nice car like a fo- like a Land Cruiser or a Forerunner. Taliban guys driving that. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yikes. Yeah, dude. Crazy. Fucking wild. You should nope. do a spinoff. Are you the Taliban? <laughs> 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 Only on Patreon.com. Awesome, dude. So, um, All right. Damn. That's All right. crazy. Holy shit. All right. Let's get into some fucking let's garbage questions. Let's do some cues here. <laughs> let's do it. I don't think Francis likes this. Passport. He's hot. No, I'm, I, <laughs> I, I Fox love- Fox News guy over here, too. <laughs> no. I was just- Do your duty for your country. I'm yeah. trying to Choke think Choke this kid out in his sleep. Where, where his trip- would fit on your guys scale of garbage it's just it's just insane it's just it's like off it's not even garbage it's just like where'd you sleep did you guys go back to yeah. the city if I would like tell to my hotel? mom i just guest sat houses. with a guy who was in afghanistan guest houses they're basically hotels but they call them guest houses and who set the, who initially set this up for you a tour guide it's not like Perillo tours. No, but I'm in this what Facebook group. What page of Expedia did you find this on? I'm in this Facebook group that you need to apply to get into, and it like basically asks you like how many places you've been. It like you get interviewed basically, and then there's access to all these kind of tour guides and these quotes. Well, you're booking a, you're, if, I mean, that is kind of trash if you're booking your your vacations on Facebook groups. Yeah, I'll give you, that. you want to hear the, the, the most trash. recent group that I had to interview for to join on Facebook was what are you two doing over it was there? it was the, the fuck? Greenwich, Connecticut <laughs> furniture sale where you have to live in Greenwich, Connecticut uh-huh. and you get these moms who are like we bought an entire living room of restoration hardware couches only to have me realize that's not the vibe I was going for. <laughs> so I got to make space because now we're going with this other stuff. Mm-hmm. Would anyone like to buy this $16,000 sectional for 400 bucks? <laughs> Just come take it. Just come take it. Yeah, and start doing to, that. I had to interview to get into did that you get group. You, are you, I'm waiting. Mm-hmm. Well, how, how did you how did you juke the system? Somebody told me you you change your you change your all of your Facebook information to say that you live in Greenwich. Connecticut. And that's it. And then you have to like kind of prove that you live in Greenwich sure. and that you're not just a furniture hunter. Quick Photoshop. Yeah. And this wow. is also that's you, my kind of because you want this kind of furniture. Uh, I, we're you know we're looking for some like coffee tables and some like. You go to West Elm or CB two or something. Yeah, like that. that's that's dude. I'm telling you, you can get way cheaper than what those stores sell in some of these Facebook marketplace groups. But if you go to like the really elite neighborhoods and can kind of fudge your way in, and they don't really care about the cash, you get, they're like, "Hey, sure, just get rid say, of it." That's that's actually a good loophole. That's very smart. Take this off. That's my real. Hands. That's top tier dirtbag shit. Yeah. I'll tell you that. <laughs> These yeah. two are fucking bunkos. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, this is like a whole episode bonkers. of our podcast that we're describing. <laughs> Fucking crazy. <laughs> what we talk about. <laughs> what the fuck? Julio's embedded with the Taliban, and you're like, I'm looking for end tables in Connecticut. <laughs> Where are you going next? <laughs> Nowhere. Like, I don't have anything like that planned at the moment. I'm like in the weeds editing all this shit. Uh, for now, it's just like road comedy stuff and a bunch of fucking weddings. Nice. Okay. Yeah. What about you? You got anything on the books for the summer? You get out? Or you go? You're a skier. You go? You going out west or anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to Telluride, Colorado to ski. There you go. My favorite place. Sick. Go. So awesome. Uh, and you then ski or snowboard? Ski. Ski. That's, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Is snowboard and trashy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. He's wearing yeah. LL Bean. You think he's? Yeah. Or what do you got? K two. <laughs> what are you snowboards? He's <laughs> listening. There, there are. I think there are still three mountains in the United States that are skiing only. Mm-hmm. It's Alta. They're the only ones he goes to. Oh, Deer Utah. Valley, both in Utah, Alta and Deer Valley, and then there's one. I think it's Mad River Glen in like New Hampshire or something like that. Sure. And uh, you don't see any snowboarding only mountains no no because they would just be a disgrace i mean it'd be, <laughs> it'd be a drug fuel just, bunch of dirt bags pipe, bunch dude. of guys wearing blue jeans yeah. monster it's energy drink going around <laughs> yeah and can you handle the, the the rough stuff can you do like the yeah. double black diamonds or whatever it's called i grew up skiing in maine it was like you know you'd have 20 below wind chill just pure ice all the snows blown off the mountain huh and you'd be out there being like this is fun mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Let's do another lap. Yeah, hitting the moguls. Still yeah, out there I mean, fucking living. I got to do something. <laughs> Get on that Facebook. Yeah. Find out what the hell's going on. Take care of that infection on your nose. <laughs> all right. Before you try extreme sports, <laughs> it hurts so bad. <laughs> Um, CPAP scars right. CPAP scars man yeah. It's fucking jammed up I was sick last week And I slept for like 14 hours And I guess it was like Rubbing up against my My nose And it fucking just got infected That or in the south end of an eight ball I did I put, put everything <laughs> on it I, I treated That's it for everything He came south up Hey man I swear to god It's my CPAP machine I, I, like, put, a, right, I, I put a Breva on it I put Neosporum on it I put cortisone on it Nothing worked So I'm going to the derm tomorrow Get it looked at Go see oh. Dr. Chicoli. He'll straighten me out. <laughs> Dr. Chicoli? Hey, <laughs> smack, yeah, smack, smack, smack. Back with his stuff again? What are you doing? Are you, are you on a junk? <laughs> <laughs> he's making meatballs while he's talking to me. Um, all right, let's hop into some fucking garbage questions here. Guys, as you know, when you sign up for the Patreon, we answer your garbage question on the air. It's just the best way to do it. Speaking of doctors... Uh, this is from Jose, $10 homie, never had one read. Is it garbage if your oral surgeon is connected to a Jimmy John's? <laughs> <laughs> Which it shouldn't because it's, but if it is, you do qualify your doctor by what it's next to, I feel. Sure. Uh -huh, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'd say not necessarily, dude. It might just be one of those commercial strips. Jimmy John's is a good tenant. Uh, it's true. They are, they, are, they are an anchor store, probably. Yeah. It's a big retail chain. Yeah. Of crazy Corporate lot. money, probably paid a few months up front. Not as trashy as it might seem. Uh, yeah. Either one of you guys have braces? I did. You did? Mm -hmm. Where was your doctor at? Was it in a house? No. <laughs> really? It was in one of well, those. I don't yeah. that. Ours yeah. Dr. Business Persichetti. Sort of professional centers. centers. I don't know what you'd call sure. it. Sure. You had to drive in. Everything looked exactly the same. They're mm -hmm. like real estate offices and a dermatologist, probably. Yeah, I don't professional know. Professional building. It's big like in the that. Philly burbs for it to be Mine connected a to a house. Yeah. I never had braces, but I went once and it was in a house. Yeah. Mm. It's a real, real, real weird vibe. I remember my, our guy would have his dog running around I, at like six. <laughs> I'm like, this can't be good. Dude. Like the fucking, <laughs> you got that thing in your house stuck over the dander falling in there. Uh, you guys both had him? I didn't have them. I had the uh, the appliance that goes on the top where it like cranks. It's like a jaw head gear. Uh, no, no, it, it's a palate no. expander. Palate expander. Yeah, and I remember I could feel my head. I could feel my bone moving. That's not fun. When they did it, that's Jesus, not dude. fun. I had them for six years because I was so bad with them. Oh damn! I never fucking wore my rubber bands because I I have an overbite, and so they took the rubber the hooks of the rubber bands out and they put in these things called Jasper jumpers, which were like <laughs> sounds like a firecracker. <laughs> <laughs> that Which can't be good. Sounds like, like bait. <laughs> <laughs> I take a bucket of Jasper jumpers and uh, hey, what do you want? Hey, what are they biting on, big guy? Huh? <laughs> now you want to take one of those Jasper jumpers? Those uh, they're really feeding on those. They went the other way. And are you they going for bluefin? Get them to Jaspers. <laughs> uh, they would push my jaw out, but they were on. They were on like this little track in my mouth. They were. It was like thick cable. It was fucking brutal, man. And if I opened my mouth too quick, it would like catch. It was, I wrestled yeah. with that shit for fucking four years in high school. It was brutal. <laughs> and now my teeth are still on the fun. junkyard. You know, the Jimmy John's thing, the uh, people I know have started as their business buying franchises of these fast food chains. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, you get emailed all the yeah, time. Yeah, you start with like one Burger King mm -hmm. or something like that. And then they'll add like two Subways or whatever. They get the sense of the business. It's not easy. It's all, and it also takes a lot of money. It takes a lot like of money. A million dollars. To and open one and up. and getting the right to buy one of the franchises is hard. Yeah. Like they don't just give you. They're not like, hey, go ahead, build a Burger King or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's not some Facebook group. I'll pay that. that <laughs> yeah, it's a little more rigorous. <laughs> this guy, this guy said, you know, that the heart. They were like, what's the hardest thing for you? And he said that um, it's it's staffing, because like a lot of the time, you know, like a lot of days. You'll get a call from like the manager of the Burger King being like, "We have no one to close." Eighty percent of the staff didn't come. <laughs> yeah. We have nobody here, and he has to like call people and be like, "Where are you?" And they'll be like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in prison again." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, "I'm going to rehab," or like, "I have you know all kinds Bally of work excuses." There. <laughs> um, and so just like it's it's impossible to yeah. staff, and he's had to go and like work the register. Yeah, my brother oh, and God, my brother yeah. and cousin ran Dunkin' Donuts. Like his like my uncle bought them, and my brother and my cousin managed them. They were like, "Yeah, we just ended up having to work at Dunkin' Donuts." For <laughs> like, yeah, you just have to open and close because no one wanted to do it. <laughs> like you just crazy. spend like nine hours a day yeah. at fucking Dunkin'. I had Donuts. no idea. They thought they were gonna be like you know 
executive fat cats. Right. You know, we're just employees at Dunkin' Donuts now. Yeah. What are you doing investment wise? I'm sure you dabble in some things. You know, I have been aware. I've been made aware that I'm not smart when it comes to investing. Really? And so my- you play the market. As no, they say. I you know I just get caught up in shit. Like I, that's my <laughs> kind of investing, dude. I just put some money in crypto yeah, myself. Crypto, <laughs> crypto. You know what are you holding? I I, I got S U K U and it doubled nothing, overnight. I got something. nothing anymore. I dumped it all, you know, for a pretty significant loss. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, you know. Whoopsie daisies. At least I got something, you know. Hey, that loss is a write off. Yeah, yeah, it is. Damn right. Yeah. It do you is. have an IRA? Uh, yeah, I do. See? Yeah, kids, all right. I haven't. I but it's not. It's not substantial. It's not like I couldn't. I couldn't retire on it yet. Okay. Um. Now with all that LLB. Yeah. This no, shit. Exactly. Play um, off the remanded furniture for a little while. <laughs> I. I don't know. I. I mean. I. Uh, no. I, I. I guess. I. I just have learned that. You know, having cash, is never like the worst thing in the world. Mm-hmm. Okay. Having something in your having money in your checking account. Is never bad. Like it's you not know, what Grant Cardone says. You know that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he's, who's that? He's telling everybody, don't buy a house. I don't know. Oh, you talking? Is it the guy with the gray hair? Yeah, that guy's yeah. gonna crash. He's your al- bird soon. He's always cursing on like uh, like uh, talk shows yeah. and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. He's the kind of guy. who's like, never buy a yeah. house. Just get your money. Home rent, myth. Buy something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Movie. I mean, I don't know. I, I I try to just to just not be stupid, but I I also desire things a lot. You know, I get swept up in things that other people want fads yeah like what <laughs> drop one dude on i me. could i could trace i've said this to g before i could trace my I, entire I could life answer this for you i could trace my entire life from one fad that i was hooked on to the next okay yeah. starting with like beanie babies and then pokemon cards uh-huh. and then going into like you got into that cards shit? oh dude real lady killer i bet <laughs> anything skateboarding you see my skateboarding and then on to like collecting dvds for some reason okay I did you that know too. uh <laughs> sneakers yeah sneakers hey, I rush went hour to. three was pretty good and then i and then i then you start the, the older i remember i remember being younger and Wait, it, hold like, on you had beanie babies of course I did well, how old were you Around eight. Oh, all right. Seven. That's okay. Not not an adult collector. All I'm right. saying my whole life I could it was just one Looking thing for something that you were part of for a year. It's like I have to have I had the magazines with like the oh like the dark blue peanut. Yeah, the, oh, the Beanie that, Baby magazine. The, that was like the, the I thought you meant like, the you meant like Maxim yeah. or something. There's two like, cool yeah. kids over here. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> well, luckily, you know, when I, I was wanted in the Taliban's turning them. <laughs> yeah. Poor I kid's disillusioned. I didn't yeah, play with them. <laughs> I didn't play with the Beanie Babies. <laughs> <laughs> I was collecting. Yeah, they were collectors. Oh, yeah. Those oh. were my investments. <laughs> Did you play with uh, action figures when you were a kid? Not really. When I was like five, maybe, I had I had some Star Wars action figures that I really liked. Yeah. I did, and I'll tell you what. Mine were. This is a very garbage thing. Mine were all secondhand. Like I had, oh. I had action figures that were cool in the '80s. There right. were. I had like He Man, yeah, and right. like we bought them you, from but tag you didn't sales. Have the stuff you could watch. Correct. Like, that was like currently really. You bought awesome. them from tag sales. Tag sales. Like, well, uh, there's another word for it. I'm sure. Garage what do you guys call it? Garage sale. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like on somebody on their fucking front lawn is selling yeah. their old shit. I would get all those. Dudes. That's where you would get your toys. Yep. So I'd have like Skeletor and like shit from the eighties that was like no longer even in, in syndication. Yeah. Really. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Playing with Gilligan. I got some. I don't want to like throw my parents under the bus. I did have some current ones. Like they got me some like Ghostbusters and some. Sure. Like, you know what I mean? But a lot of the time we grab. I don't even think stuff. that was current when you were yeah. a kid. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> you're playing. You're playing with the six million dollar man. Had the, I had the Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> Oh, boy, oh boy. <laughs> Never got the Bill Murray, yeah. but uh, <laughs> brother, I uh, was hard to find. That's good. Man, <laughs> fucking wild. That's uh, man. All right. All right. Let's see here. Is it garbage to play the same game, movie, or show on multiple TVs in the house for surround sound? <laughs> <laughs> it never sinks up. I got to respect it, man. It really fills out the room, I'm sure. <laughs> I got to give it to you. Uh-huh. It never sinks up. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. That's like an idiot savant. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just buy speakers, dude. Why? You're, you have to, You need more TVs yeah. you know, in That's order true. to do Yeah, that. I guess you have to have every TV. That makes... I, I guess it makes sense to me, though. Yeah. Right? No, because it doesn't sync up. Because the TV's always like a second behind the other one. Yeah, and also, not for nothing, why would you have... 
two TVs in the same room. No, different rooms. So I guess. Like okay, the but then room, then you're the, then you're you know. getting an uh, an echo. Okay, well, he's clearly doorway. not the sharpest tool in the shed. All right. <laughs> 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 he's not a beanie baby collector. Give him a break, will you? I'm but just, theoretically, this guy's watching it on cable, in which case it would sync up. That's what I'm saying. I guess, yeah, it yeah. would. Mm. Oh, I guess, yeah, this TV White man can't jump, son. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fucking throw it on in every yeah. room. Well, at my, at my parents' up. house, if you put something on downstairs and something on upstairs, and it's the same cable thing, the one downstairs is a little bit behind. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. Toby sh- or the, the tech guy shaking his head, yeah. That makes sense? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Foley's Did you get caught up in the surround sound shit? Did you have speakers and all that stuff? Uh, well, Did you have a speaker behind the couch? Now you do <laughs> now I do you have that now yeah I didn't I didn't before do you have a sound system which is we, we got Sonos what's Sonos Sonos is awesome it's a dude. sponsor <laughs> Sonos is great I'm glad you brought that up Foley Toby bleep that name <laughs> yeah uh no they're they're it's like uh it's around sound. it's really well yeah but they they make you know you can wire your whole house with it so like we have a, a bluetooth one in this in the uh, kitchen, okay, or whatever for music, and then you have we have a sound bar, and some of the some of the behind Touchy speakers here on the show. Yeah. Sound uh, the bars. sound bar. Toby yeah. got them for us for Christmas, and I gave mine away, and I think he <laughs> threw his out. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Why? <laughs> it sucked. That's why. Oh Ow. my God! Damn. Savage. Oh man. <laughs> 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 the one thing I worry about with the soundbar living in New York is that the bass will make your life difficult with your neighbors and shit. Yeah. However, they do not make like flat screen TVs with loud enough speakers. So like mm. I find myself turning my shit up to a hundred all the time, yeah. Yeah. which is annoying. Uh-huh. No, speak- I agree. I agree. Once you get a decent surround system, you're never going to go back. You realize what you're missing out. <laughs> yeah. And let yeah? me tell you something. This is the crazy part. When you have the, the subwoofer going, if you ever watch NBA Game time or NBA, the one with Charles Barkley sure. and Kenny and whatnot. When Shaq speaks, <laughs> it scares the, the dogs <laughs> off the couch <laughs> from the subwoofer. His voice and his voice alone. Sure. That's crazy. I'll tell you, Kenny. <laughs> it's just the whole thing rumbles. It's nuts. That's fucking That's awesome. absurd, dude. That's crazy. Shout out to Shaq. Yeah. Legend. Uh, He's an investor. Yeah. Sure. He buys all those uh, fast food franchises. Yeah. He's a huge investor in fast food. Well, I think food. at that point, when you ha- can buy like a bunch of them, yeah, and you're like, like yeah. you're not going to see Shaq dropping Automatic. fries, right. you know what right. I mean? You know what he does? It's really smart sense. too, yeah. just to get a j- just to get some free shit. He did this when I was waiting tables at Bear Burger. Came in with like a squad full of people, like twenty people. Comes in, sits down, brings over the manager. He's like, I'm thinking about you know investing in bu- in buying a Bear Burger. Everything's fucking free. Wow. wow. All, the, all the burgers. I don't know if he's doing that for free food. He knows what's that up. That guy makes more money than uh, as he's ordering than we make in a He year. knows what he's doing. No way. <laughs> and also, he's not going to go to the guy, the waiter, and be like, hey, I'm thinking about buying one of these. I'm t- telling you, that's exactly what happened. I was there. I'm yeah, you've, you. you've never fibbed on. We gotta air see if Shaq. Let's pull up Shaq's portfolio. See if he owns any bear burgers. He yeah. doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. He, yeah, exactly. He walked away. He I'm was never in a bear burger. He's been refreshing it ever since. <laughs> yeah, <it's not> <laughs> fucking gone. We nice saw you and Shaq work together. <laughs> Bad financials. Bad financials. I would love that. <laughs> lot of overhead. Lot of overhead. <laughs> Sweet potato fries are all right though. Uh, place is great. He yeah. got he made all he made a shit ton of money in the Google IPO. Really, Shaq? Yeah, he was playing. He was in a lobby. He tells a story. He was like, in, I think it was Google. He was in a lobby, uh, playing with this kid, like a like a real nice hotel lobby. And this kid came up, and they were just playing together, or whatever. Like he was waiting. He had like fifteen minutes to kill. And then this dad, hit the kid's dad, came over and was like, "Hey, man, thanks a lot for doing that. I was whatever, whatever." And he's like, you know, if you. And he gave him the tip. He was like a big exec. He's like, hey, we're going to go, you know, we're going public on this date or whatever, if you can get it. So they like, he got in. Yeah, I wow. figured you'd be yeah. getting tips from your from your squad all the time. Uh, I don't, I don't know. But You're supposed to be on the inside. People, people aren't hitting me up. They're huh. hitting up like venture capital firms. Okay. You know what I mean? The people that I know are like, they don't, they don't want. Ten grand from me. <laughs> that's not what they're. That's, true. that's not that's what also they need. True. <laughs> hey, let's, get, let's see if that comedian's got eighty bucks on him. Yeah. <laughs> I got a great opportunity for you. What do you, you mean know? you won't take a Mark McGuire rookie card? <laughs> yeah. Did you tell him about the Beanie Babies, Fritz? Yeah. No, they, they they need. And it's funny. I earlier in my life there was one that I I kind of missed on where I did. It was that. It was like a ten grand thing. What was the company? It's called Forto. They make these like espresso shots that you can buy at 7-Eleven in little okay. plastic cups. 
And you could have got in for 10 G's? Yeah, 10 G's. And like, I didn't. I was like, this is, these, I tried them. Didn't really like them. Uh-huh. I was like, I, I don't I don't know. And now they're in like every 7-Eleven. Really? Yeah. I want something like How that. How much would you have Somebody made? hit me up with I something. Don't know. I mean, you assume. It, the problem with that is like, it's, it's never as crazy as you think because they'll do a round of uh, fundraising. And you get in for your ten grand, and you get whatever like point oh one percent of the company, and, diluted and then they back. do another round at a new valuation as they're growing. And the only way to maintain your stake is to now reinvest mm. at, to, to at, at at the new valuation to maintain your original position. Hmm. If not, you get diluted. You still make good money, but it's never like oh, I bought one percent of the company, and then ten years later, the it's company's a worth dollars, a billion right? dollars. I get one percent. It's not like that. That's what happened to the kid at Facebook, right? The one that got screwed, Andrew Garfield's character. Uh, so he had thirty percent of Facebook as as basically a handshake deal because he was CFO and had invested in his own money. Uh huh. And then <clears throat> they had they had given him paperwork as a new restructuring under which, the guise of he thought they were his lawyers. Well, he thought they were friends. Interest. He yeah. thought Mark Zuckerberg was his friend, and, and without reading the fine print, they diluted his shares. But did not dilute the shares of any other early investors. Damn, savage! What but then dick. they settled, and he made over a billion on the settlement. Oh, there oh, you amazing. go. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Dad see Zuckerberg, that. <laughs> see me in your Facebook group, <laughs> dork. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one's just funny. This is Thomas. Ever go through a reggae phase? <laughs> Who's reggae? <laughs> yeah. What? Who? Oh, reggae. <laughs> you thought it was a reggae? That's a... Uh... You know my boy Ray Gay? Yeah, that's that's like... uh, Ray J's gay brother. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> reggae. Uh, I did for sure. When you find out about Bob Marley, you're like, I got... As a kid, you're like, 100%. I got to get the... Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, High school. It's, it's, almost like, yeah. Uh, it's almost like hard to put Bob Marley in some sort of like reggae. Uh, he's... Because I, I think he's an enduring amazing musician yeah that was on the genre if you went beyond bob marley and got into like (laughs) if you got in the weeds of local reggae you might have been bunny ferguson or whoever it was yeah Yeah. but i that was that was class he was just lumped in with classic rock to me who Uh, bob marley bob marley yeah yeah, Yeah, when i started getting into classic rock when i was probably in seventh or eighth grade it was steve miller band first Mm -hmm. then like zeppelin pink floyd the doors uh, and then Bob Marley was thrown in there. Bob Marley's greatest hits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, mm. beyond that, get the fuck out of here. You listen to wacky shit. I used to, I had a little bit of a reggae phase. Not as hard as some of my peers, but I can, I can throw some names at you. Buju Banton. <laughs> <laughs> Barrington Levy. Uh, I got he some. He takes his hat off. He's got dreadlocks. <laughs> in general, not my favorite genre. I do listen to some crazy shit. Though. You do. I, I like see you of... posting shit and I'm like, where? Like. Yeah, I, I like, like smoking hip-hop. doobies. I guess I, I don't yeah. know. I like a lot of like like Latin trap music too. Latin trap music. <laughs> Julio but is the guy who he's. You're a man of very very many different tastes. <laughs> when you yeah, when true. you see it, that a ra- some someone's a musician has been killed mm-hmm. and you don't know who they are, you'll go to his Instagram and he's it got like an R.I.P. R.I.P. <laughs> 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 that's how pre- that's how present he is with that music. That's true. Sure, yeah, that's true. Sure. That's yeah. pretty funny. It's also you two are a very funny dynamic because like you know you're obviously <laughs> R.I.P. You know, to Winston Thuring. And Clemens or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, totally. You come from like a you know the Ivy League background and everything. Like you're one person and you're different, but you can operate in the same circles. He can. Hundred yeah, percent. My true. Yeah, friend group. You 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 can walk in both worlds pretty seamlessly. Thank you. And Appreciate I think like that. you know yeah, you could put him at a party in the Hamptons. Yeah, fucking, and like no you're, problem. You're also like you got an, enough dirt under your fingernails, but you're also very cool. And you're like, hey, do you hear this music? And they. You know, Francis' friends are like, what the fuck? Is this, guy yeah. <laughs> this guy's all right. Huh? For the for what it's worth, I, I can operate in that in the lower world. I just choose not to. <laughs> yeah. I don't can, like it. The lower can, world. You can come to Thanksgiving at my I can house get the dirt right. under my fingernails and be like, wow, you guys drinking some fun stuff today? <laughs> Was that jungle juice in the cooler? Oh, man. Show me a glass. <laughs> But I don't go there. <laughs> sure. As I don't yeah, like because you wouldn't be able to go back to your other circles. I probably. just I don't have enough to talk about with those people. <laughs> I, they don't. They're not reading. I don't. It, it, it's, it's we run out of road pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah. You it just I just picture you and another guy just staring at each other. Yeah. Like, right. You wear shirts. Me too, man. Yeah. Yeah. You ever uh, make a bomb? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Are you reading something right now? You reading a book right now? I am. Yeah. What are you reading? Uh, Hold on a second. Is it fiction or nonfiction? Fiction. Fiction. Yeah. Is it always fiction? No. You do a nonfiction. I probably two 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 fictions and one nonfiction. It's my sort of run out at the same time. No, no. Like I, I'll do two back to back. I'll read a novel, read another novel, and then I'll read a cleanses palate with something. Yeah, no yeah. History. Yeah. And what are you reading before you go to bed? 
Yeah, and then in the morning, I like reading in the morning to start my day. I'll get I get up early. I wake up really early. What time? I'm like six thirty. Get up at six thirty. Have a coffee. Yeah. Do some exercise. I assume. No. What kind of coffee are we talking? Uh, what are you making it in? Uh, we got <laughs> we got our own coffee from Brooklyn Roasting Company. Oh, Oop, you the guys Oops do? Blend. Yeah. Oops Oops Blend. Yeah. It's Brooklyn pretty good. Coffee Company hit me up. Shout Brooklyn out to Roasting. The Oops Blend. It's awesome. Uh, we <laughs> the love Taliban it. Blend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Afghani beans. <laughs> That's what you're over there brokering. Yeah. 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 Right. This yeah. kid's getting in the H game. <laughs> coffee yeah. bean deals. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, I have a coffee, and then I sit in a chair and, and just sort of watch the sunrise and pat the dogs and, and read my book for like an hour. And it's great. Really? It's easier way into Peaceful. the day. Peaceful. And then when yeah. are you working out? At 4 to 5 p.m., 5 p.m. Typically you wait till the, the afternoon. Day. Yeah. Are you having breakfast? Oh, yeah. What are you having? Uh, I have the overnight oats still. Oh, like that's we right. we talked about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Last yeah. time I was on the show. Kid's yeah. a machine. Yeah. What are you doing? I mean, in the morning, yeah. I just kind of wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Take an edible. <laughs> Call up Ricky, see what yeah, he's doing. No, I don't do anything. See like, what's left in I the do bong. Not, I don't, I'm not like a routine person, uh, and I'm not saying that proudly. Like, I just am not. So yeah. It has its pros and cons. But I'm, I don't need to, like, relax and ease into the day. Some days I like to do that, but I don't have, like, a thing like him. I just wake up and shower or whatever yeah. and go do my shit, sit at my computer. For the record, um, this routine sort of became more regular when we got this puppy because the puppy wakes up super early. I went through it myself, sure. yeah. And they, it, changes, it changes everything. Her bladder just sucks. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> you know, unless if you don't get up with her, she's going to shit and piss on the floor. She's going to ruin the day. And then you're Big like, motivator. all right, so I have to get up. And then you're up, you're up at 5, 45, 6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, well, I'm not going back to bed. Mm-hmm. So I might as well just do something peaceful. Is this regardless of what time you go to sleep? Or do you go to sleep on a regimented schedule every night? Well, we know that the dog's going to do that. So we're pretty more... More, more, it just makes us more tired earlier, yeah. and we end up going to bed at like ten o'clock. Do you fall asleep easily? Yeah, I know you wake up easily and can't go back to sleep, but you fall asleep easily. Yeah, I fall asleep no problem. And do you regulate your stand up spots? Like, do you not take spots after a certain time? I have, I have been, I've tried, I've <laughs> asked the Booker, hey, you know, I can't, I don't, I prefer, <laughs> but like <laughs> until you have me. a kid. <laughs> It's kind of a pussy thing to be like, sure. can, I got you, a puppy. Uh, can you I not give me yeah. the late spots? But for the um, most part, you're in bed at 10 o'clock every night? It's 10.30. Damn, that's pretty good. Yeah, lights are off by I 11. need a little bit of that in my are life. Are you guys I late? Like uh, night owls? Depends, yeah. Depends on the spots, but definitely if I'm home, no spots. 11, I'll probably shut it down, or at least mm. I'll be like on the couch, like lights yeah. out, just kind of fucking chilling Same. or whatever. I'm all over Dogs the Dogs already yeah. walked, uh, but then, you know. If I'm boozing, whatever, you know, it tends to be different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't have regulated yeah. spots. Sometimes I get ones at like one thirty, two o'clock, and like I'll, I'm, that might be the only spot that I have. That's And I'll leave at like midnight to go and do it, and then oh come home, God, and then I come home, and then I eat something. I, I'd love a schedule. I'll tell you this, as I get older, getting into bed early, man. <laughs> About nine thirty, nice. taking nice. a nice hot shower. It's Woo-wee. really nice, Absolutely. especially on the weekend. Because yeah. on the weekend you feel like you don't, you don't have to, but if you do it on the weekend and you're like up, you, you're in bed early and you're up early, you just have so much I feel more like weekend. It's cheeky. Yeah. You have like more weekend. Fuck? Yeah, and you use your weekend better. You don't have that like hungover anxiety that prevents planning. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? You just can't do anything except consume. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Wow, I've never heard it put any other way. Yeah. 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 Just do anything. Here's but another consume. thing, too. That's all I want to. That's all I can on. do is consume. Yeah. Yeah. I've been <laughs> off the booze for about a week. Like, I, the last time I drank, uh, were we together? It was that Saturday that I that that, that that Brooklyn Comedy Club. I had a couple of drinks. And then I think I went out to dinner the night before. But after that, I haven't fucking drank in a while. Man, it really makes a fucking big difference. Yeah. And I know, drink I a choice. Th- Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. What's your drink of choice? Oh, what's my drink of choice? Uh, I'm tequila and sodas. Nice. Uh-huh. I like tequila and sodas. I like a martini, nice. but I just fucking. No bueno. Sorry, what were you saying? No. I know I took I took a bunch of days off too. Maybe like I drank, I think, once or twice in about 21 days. And then I went out this weekend and like, and there's just nothing better. 
then That's like s- fucking saddling up to a bar, Earn shot in a beer, yeah. fucking yeah, bullshitting right. with the boy. It's like it's I'm like, oh, this fun. is this is what I miss. So it's all about. I, I, I did the same thing. I tried to do like a. I tried to do a dry January. It quickly became a like damp January. Negotiating it. <laughs> yeah, you're just like making concessions for yourself, and the it it ended three or four days early. I mean, definitively ended. It, yeah. You know where? What are you drinking? Negronis. Uh, I do love a Negroni. Blood, I like I like <laughs> beer. I like good beer. I've really gotten into good beer. I, I posted a picture of the main IPA, lunch IPA. Yeah, he was the main beer company. Oh my god, I love that. I was like, that's oh, also Freeport, yeah. Maine. So yeah. that's also that's like within Maine. Dudes love Maine. Yeah, yeah. Maine is a great place. Maine's. I am very happy that I grew up there. Can your Kenny Bunkport? Yeah, not far. Probably like forty five minutes from it's there. Where the bushes live. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've driven by their compound. It's out on like an island, really? but it's not an island. It's like it's just its own sort of disconnected piece of land. Mm-hmm. But I mean, they've got an armored, you know, yeah, driveway sure. yeah, with, a, with a, a house with like a guy and almost like a toll booth guy. Mm-hmm. But you you know he's strapped. Yeah. Of course, he's not collecting easy. Yeah. <laughs> There's a great story about how there's a great book, by the way. Uh, it's called The President. Oh, uh, uh, quick shit. plug. No one has ever said that in this podcast. It's <laughs> you better be taxes for dummies. Uh, you yeah. better be talking about hustler. I think you guys would like this. Holy uh, shit. It's called The President's Club, and it's is it's, DiCaprio in it? If not, I'm out. <laughs> Um, it's, it's basically like, uh, the sort of how, how a lot of presidents, certainly in the 20th century would, even after exiting office, maintain a foothold in the white house and and advise the next presidents. And you find out about how, um, like Nixon, especially was, was so many presidents after Nixon would call upon him for foreign policy advice and he would like come back to the white house, even though he was disgraced. Um, and, and these people who allegedly, yeah, (laughs) like even, even presidents that had run against the incumbent and had unseated them specifically Clinton unseating Bush senior who, you know, you, you're basically, you're in debates against each other and you've stolen the guy's job, Mm -hmm. right? Those two forged a really strong friendship, which, uh, there's a great story in the book about how Clinton would go up to Maine to the, the Bush uh, compound at, in Kenny Bunkport, and they would take the motorboat from the dock in Kenny Bunkport, and Bush would be driving it, and they'd be going like, you know, 80 miles an hour, 60 miles through, hurtling through waves, just the yeah. two of them to, down to Portland to get like a lobster roll or something, but like tossing around and having yeah, a great awesome. time. I don't know to get their dick sucked. It's yeah. probably what they were doing. It's an ultimate <laughs> shot and beer with the boys right there. Yeah. 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 The boat ride to get a fucking lobster roll. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. That's a, that's awesome. That's a hang, dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, let's see here. I'd love to get, you know, Francis is a dapper guy. And also, Julio cleans up quite well. Mm. I appreciate it. Um, Sharp kid. This is from Cooper. Uh, is it garbage to run out of an undershirt and wear a regular T-shirt under a button-up for a suit? Wait, what's the difference? Like, there's a difference between an undershirt and, like, this T-shirt I'm wearing is an outward T-shirt. Mm. That's really? That's an outward so T-shirt. So he means, like, okay, yeah. like. Also, what? how do you? How do both of you feel about the T-shirt under the dress? Under the dre- it's a tough look. <laughs> it's a very tough look. It's not Because you see it's it. It's not a great move. <laughs> <laughs> the only way you could justify it, I guess, it's such a, it's such a thing where... You wear it to, I think, right, if it's really hot out. To prevent the sweat. To try to prevent yeah. the sweat. But from, it makes you hot. But it makes you hot. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very tight rope you're walking. Damned there. if you do, damned if you don't. I don't um, understand what, the, what t shirt, it's the same thing. What's an undershirt? Like one of those Hanes, they come in a pack a of three, light, thin, super light. light very Dude, if light, you wore light, that, light you could see the purple under your shirt. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're always white, this, typically. Uh, we're 500 episodes into this, you're 46 year olds, and we're explaining colors to you at this point. <laughs> no, I mean, I would wear, if I, would, if I could fit into a Hanes t-shirt, I would wear a Hanes t-shirt. No. no, not outward though. They're like see-through kind. They're of. really sheer. Yeah. And, and you have to understand what an under. You don't know what an undershirt is. They're thinner. To an outward, like that's a t-shirt you would wear out to a podcast recording. But I would wear this under a uh, button-down shirt. Yeah, right? you shouldn't. We're saying no? you that's a, no, little, a purple that's a... shirt <laughs> under a white button-down, dude? If I really want the job, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what? Fucking Barney? I mean, <laughs> what's the job? 
<laughs> that you're applying for where they're like, is Horrendous. that, a, is that undershirt purple? <laughs> Hang on a second. I, hope, I couldn't help but notice. <laughs> this is our guy. It looks like your skin is purple and you have a shirt on. I was it. told you were supposed to wear gray under a white shirt and then you can't see it. No? I mean, I, I, I don't Could know. Be. Maybe. I, don't know. I would have thought white under a white shirt. Yeah. Most, no most, sense. most of those undershirts are white. Hmm. Or you'll get black An ones. So you is go no white. T. I don't wear a T, but that's I, I'm gonna sound like a douche here. It's usually because the button downs I'm wearing are too tight for me to wear a sure. shirt underneath. Yeah. Kids got talking. tight body. Now we're them. talking. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, like uh, most of them, I, I, I'd be I'd be bulky. Who was your suit under. for your for your wedding? What'd you wear? Suit supply. Suit supply. Oh, I go for everything. Supply for They're great. Wedding. They were great. They're Is not that so, custom made. No. No. They're off the rack. It's not expensive. You got it tailored though, right? Yeah, you got to get it like hemmed. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, brought in a little in the yeah, back. Tighten her up. I <laughs> let mine out. Uh, what I <laughs> what I'll do sometimes because it's tough. It depends on the the the, the white of the shirt because I got chest hair that you then see through the shirt if mm. it's a light shirt. Yeah, which uh, is a problem. Yes, right. Get yes. the waxeroo. Uh, it's just too much. So <laughs> this is a dirtbag move, but it works, and no one you can't tell the difference. If you do want to go undershirt, cut the sleeves off an undershirt. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God. Let so, them know you fucking so party. You don't, you don't see it if you take your when you take your jacket off. You don't see the sleeve. Oh, interesting. It's the same color as your and you can't tell because the the seam stops at the seam for the above shirt. It's pretty good. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Like, like one of those Under Armour type yeah. things. Yeah. And make sure and it's one neck tapes. But hold on a second. Make sure I'm it's holding. a stone cold t-shirt. You're wearing though. a white. You're wearing a white <laughs> button down. <laughs> <laughs> Toss me two beers. Yeah. Okay. You're wearing a white button down. Yeah. Right. And underneath it, you've got a Hanes Sometimes. t-shirt that you've cut the sleeves off uh -huh. of. Because I like to party. <laughs> can, you, can you still see the the neckline from the t-shirt? You cut that off Funny too. You ask. You, you also cut that off. Are you telling me you V? You V it too? I v, yeah. That's <laughs> crazy. You're going, you're turning a butt. You're like a fashion Business student, man on the dude. outside, Rambo on the inside. <laughs> Woo wee. You're like a fashion designer. <laughs> Taking liberal choices. So then you're not wearing a tie. No, I am wearing a tie. So, but you said. <laughs> Do you slice up the underwear too? Just <laughs> I, I put a hole in the back. <laughs> I, I cut the toes off my socks too, just so I can feel the ground better. Kid's ready to play. I mean, it sounds like you're spending a lot of time with some scissors and some shirts, yeah, man. And that I trimming guess. your chest hair would you be a many, lot you know, easier. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> you know how many times I've been in like a hotel room getting ready for a wedding, like cutting the neck off a white undershirt? A lot. Man. A lot. Dude, that's great. That's great. It gives you that extra layer of protection. You people out there know what I'm talking. Talking about, <laughs> I, I can't love, be the only one. I also love the idea that you get so skilled at this that for for Christmas, and, you, you well, also a V-neck works, so you don't have to cut the. Oh, you could, yeah. You, you can, can buy the V-neck undershirts. Yeah. The, yeah. But wouldn't you see that? Wouldn't you see that under the... Not necessarily. Not as they much. got the collars there. I mean, it's not like a deep... I'm not like... It's not like coming down here. It's just... I would never take my jacket off if I had a fucking button up on. Keep that on my... I try to avoid it. Yeah, yeah I, I typically keep mine on. The daytime outdoor wedding is the thing where you really have to worry. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it that's... Gets hot. I, I just keep the coat on and let yeah. it... Let it soak up all the sweat. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I just, I'm like, I'm going to be uh, hot. I'd rather they not see. Agreed. Agreed. Hmm. But for the other, the other thing is, you know, you're going to have to probably dry clean your suit anyway. And I get a lot more satisfaction knowing that I've fully soiled it. You're getting Agreed. your money's worth. And I'm getting Agreed. my money's worth. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm really going like, to shit in these pants, huh? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you guys do back there, but you've got your work cut out for you. <laughs> and Are you wearing a suit so stressful? Yeah. 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 I mean, we, we've said a bunch on this. It's Especially as you're a bigger, if you know, you know, a big guy or a huskier guy, the second... You're never gonna look as good as the second you put it on. Mm -hmm. right. you, it, there's a, it's a quickly law of diminishing returns. It's yeah. like yeah. the fuse is lit. You got to get in the car. That's gonna the shirt's gonna pull. The ring. As soon as I sit down, it's back. over. It's the over. back in the car. Yeah. Ooh, I got smoked. I had a linen suit for our our rehearsal dinner thing, our bridal dinner, mm -hmm. and I I pulled it out of the you know plastic wrap from the dry cleaner. It was crisp you know steamed it with sure. the, some lady that was working there at the wedding and uh then we went we went to the rehearsal dinner you had we got, a steamer just on hand she, she it was like for mostly for like the ladies you sure. know uh but but we were 
we go into uh, we go into the shuttle to go over to the restaurant, and I'm just sitting in the car. I get out, and then someone snaps this photo, which I like posted because I thought it was really cute. And all the comments were like, "Man, you couldn't run a fucking iron over the back." <laughs> and I'm like, "I had one on there ten minutes ago." Yeah, yeah, yeah. The car jams you up. Yeah, the car really, really jams did. you up. Got to stand the whole time. I wish I yeah, or just get ready at wherever the place is. Yeah, if you you know just take your. Take it to the wedding reset or the wedding uh, oh, service yeah. and just smart. get dressed in the bathroom. Oh, like an old school comic? Uh huh. Yeah, right, right before <laughs> you go on. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I just lit them. All right, you fucking get ready. Uh, all right, this one's from Tim Crawl, Big McGraw Monroe or something. Uh, you ever been the only guy in the room in a suit? Which could be a tough look. Interesting. Because I doubt it's for the reason of like you're the CEO. You're either wildly overdressed or you just got out of court, I would assume. <laughs> That's also a comedian thing, potentially. What? Like the guys who only wear suits. Oh, yeah, That'll yeah, That'll happen yeah. to them. Yeah. I remember oh. Patty Dixon used to be rocking the suit Yeah, back Pat in the Dixon day. used to rock the suit all the time. I wore a suit one time to Gotham's new talent bringer, which was really... Oh, cool. my God. Just didn't know myself Dude, yet. Dude, a suit to a bringer show. Yeah, that was not, not great. Luckily, everyone was like, I just assumed that he had come from work. <laughs> and I like, assume he came from his insurance. And I'm like, job. I was kind of hoping to make this my work. I yeah. uh, Dude, I went to a sort of like funeral memorial service for a family member and made the mistake of asking my brother for the dress code. I was that's like, the that's also that James you up real bad. Yeah, I was like, what's the dress code? He's like, I don't know, like business casual. I wear a suit. I'm the only person in the suit. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> that sucks. You feel like <laughs> a real a asshole. Mistake. He got an interview after this. Dude, you cannot insane. relax. So, like you're just yeah. thinking. You're like, is anybody else wearing a tie? And they're like, Who's oh, Mister City Guy. Yeah, yeah. Like, dude. Yeah, I get. Oh, what are you, Mister New Yorker? Yeah. Right away. I'm like, yeah. Trying to upstage the deceased. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's in a football jersey. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? You're better than the dead. <laughs> Seriously, I man. went through. Uh, a brief blazer phase in comedy in Philly for about a couple of months. Rough, you were there for this? I, I, the first time I ever saw him ever. My uncle had he just was, died, he, and I'd gotten all of his old suits because <laughs> I was the only one that fit him <laughs> in the family that fit him. Talking about old money. Huh? suits. Shout out to my uncle, Mike. Um, yeah, and I would wear his suit coats as blazers with a T-shirt underneath because I was cool. <laughs> nice, dude. Yeah, he can't be With too the sleeves cut off. Was the dude, at the time. He was at With a, the he, sleeves cut off on a jacket. He <laughs> was hosting an open mic that we were both the first time I ever saw him. We were hosting. A, he's hosting the open mic at the Raven Lounge, two thousand nine, probably ten. Yep, sounds about right. And he gets up there, all right, you know, clap it off for your host, H Foley. He goes, ah, you know, he's really he had the showmanship already. Like yeah. he was playing up. He's you know what I mean. It. Uh-huh. And he asked the crowd, by round of applause, should I wear the blazer? Should I do no blazer? No, like, for like a three-minute set, he's he's negotiating with the crowd whether or not to do a blazer. <laughs> and they're like, no blazer. He's like, all right, I'll take it off for you. <laughs> like he was about to really let his hair down and do a number. And then they were like, blazer. Go <laughs> blazer. <laughs> go back. You cut the sleeves off that? Go back to blazer. <laughs> Is the Raven Lounge the one that's like four stories? Yeah. And it was like on the third floor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've done that. I've, I've done that, Mike. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It used to be all right. I think the buildings. I think it's closed now. The whole. Uh, the whole mm. establishment. But. Francis is like an honorary Philly guy in a way. Yeah, you're going down there for weeknight shows. Yeah, yeah. 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 I like it. I like it. I'm going on uh, Wednesday this this Wednesday to do helium, and uh, I love going down. It's just like such a close gig. It's great. Totally, and it's yeah. a great comedy city. It's yeah, a great comedy. Really all good. the you know really real rough and tumble crew down there. <laughs> Yeah. Which you like to see. Uh, all right, let's do one more. Then we got to get out of here. This is from Luigi F. Baby. Anybody you know wear the visor with the hair already built in? <laughs> <laughs> you always see some dad or uncle on a golf course rocking one of those. Uh, Thinking he's the funniest guy in the world. That's great. Uh, do you guys know anybody that wears a toupee? Anybody in the extended family? Never. I've never seen it. No, I, I wouldn't know. No. Huh. You would. You would. And you wouldn't be able to wear it in my family. You, immediately, no. somebody they would it's make a dead fun rat of it. on your head. Yeah, right away. They'd make fun <laughs> behind your back, mm-hmm. and then as the drink started going, somebody like you gotta fucking take that <laughs> thing off. Yeah. Yeah. You just gotta let it go. You're Man, scared the kids. Years old. <laughs> yeah, dude. I've never seen one. I've seen some pretty bad comb overs. Yeah, I'm rocking so these one. days, yeah. but. No, you're Are you just, rocking a comb over theoretically? Comb over, I don't think so. Man, I had a history teacher that rocked one. <laughs> it's not a comb so. straight, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a comb down, all right? <laughs> you're cutting corners somewhere. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm making choices, okay? <laughs> 
Gang, have a nice round of applause for the boys from Oops the Podcast. Uh, Francis Ellis, thank you. Julio thank you Gallarotti. Thank you. We love, love you guys you. so much. Congratulations on everything. Likewise. What do you guys got coming up? You want the folks out there to know? Plug away any shows. Fire Plug away. The pod. Uh, I'm on tour. Uh, you can find tickets for that. FrancisEllis.com. Come to your cities and uh, check out Oops the Podcast. Appreciate it. Love 100%. Uh, yeah. Uh, same. Not Julio.com. DC, 3rd to the 5th of March. A bunch of stuff coming after that. Uh, yeah, check out Oops the Podcast. That's it. Stay away from the warlords for a yeah, little while. Right? Huh? <laughs> I'm going to try. Go down here to Boca with your friends. Listen to your friend Ricky. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, no. or, I hear Ukraine's nice this time of or year. Or, G, lean into it and become an arms dealer. Yeah. I mean, at, least, at least wet your beak during yeah. all these drinks. Just think, you have the closest connections that we would need yeah, start, to get into the heroin business yeah. or the or, or the small arms Start business. another school in Syria. Yeah, uh, yeah dude, yeah. that's real shifty, yeah. man. They'll be trading me for Brittany Griner soon, yeah. dude. I don't I think my mom would even look you in the eye if she met you. She heard that <laughs> one. I'll tell you that right now. Gang, we love you to death. Kippy, you got anything for him? Uh, this is coming out Thursday, so the shows at the Gramercy start this weekend, baby. There's only tickets left for the Friday night show. Get them now if they're not already sold out. We fucking love you. It's three shows. It's amazing. We appreciate it. Gang, we love you. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.